Hey y'all, it's time for another video about new makeup releases. In this video, I'm going to go through just the things that caught my eye uh, on Trend Mood, Trend Mood 1. I'll try to remember to link that Instagram page down below an Instagram page that features brand new makeup releases. And I feel like everything that caught my eye, there's something pretty about it. Like there there really is something compelling about it. They're like, and this isn't always true of me because I'm, I'm picky and I have particular tastes. But this week, I feel like I was able to pull up a pretty hefty handful of things and about each thing, there's something quite pretty. And yet I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to buy any of it. So that's gonna be this video. I'm gonna talk about what I think is pretty and I'm gonna talk about why I'm not gonna buy that thing. If this is your first time to my channel, then hi, I'm so glad you're here. I'm Hannah, I love pretty things and I enjoy following what's new to the makeup market, but I don't buy all that much. I buy a few things here and there for review. I buy a very few things here and there for myself and that's it. So there's a lot of appreciating but not buying that goes on here. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. There is something that I wanna to touch on before I start talking about the makeup. Since my partner Joe has been helping me with a production schedule for the channel, we've been way ahead for months now, which is awesome. It's really good for my schedule. It's really good for the channel, but I'm learning that it's harder to speak on current events with an organized schedule like this, because if something is happening on or around a filming day, I'm aware that by the time that video goes up, it'll be out of date and maybe the information that I had at that time will be out of date. But I didn't want to just fail to ever mention on camera the shootings that happened in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. It's been weighing heavily on me. It's weighing heavily on me still. And I've been especially thinking about and making an active effort to continue meditating on every day the way in which racism and misogyny are particularly linked for Asian American women, how specifically, how poisonous and insidious that is, and what a struggle it must be to live with. My bright, brilliant friend, Becca Sun, has written about this on her Instagram account. She's posted it a couple of times and has recommended a handful of books, which I will also link below. I'm going to link the books that Becca recommended. And I definitely recommend following Becca for about 50 different reasons. So I'll link her Instagram account too. I know that time has passed since the actual shootings, but it doesn't mean that the problem is solved. And it doesn't mean that the fear is gone or the hurt is gone. And I just wanted to send some love out here as best I can from behind my camera. So um, the, the links will be in the description box down below. Let's talk about some beautiful things. So I, when I pulled up Trend Mood, and I haven't been following super closely or really very closely at all, but when I when I pulled up Trend Mood and kind of glanced over the past couple of weeks since I filmed a video like this before to see what was new, this really stood out to me. And it's partly because it's blue. It's this really compelling, leaning purple shade of blue, very rich. And it's also because it's Pat McGrath and it's opulent and, and stunning. And I was like, mm, that's beautiful. But it's also, I think, I mean, I think blue does stand out to us. I think it's just something about the way that humans like see and perceive color. When something is this shade of blue, it can often compel. It can also often grab the attention more than almost anything else. So there's that. But I also have history with the color blue in makeup, which is that way back before I knew really anything about makeup and knew how to apply eye makeup. There's always part of me that wanted to get into it, but because of where I came from and like my upbringing and my general way of looking at femininity and the way the how long that took to develop in my youth, it was a long time before I actually started experimenting with makeup and like learning about how things looked. And in the before times, I would, when I thought of like incredibly artistic eye makeup, I always thought of this color. And the first time that I ever went to like get eye makeup to experiment with, I bought a single eyeshadow that was like a really rich electric blue because I was like, if I ever wanna do like art on my eyes, it's gonna be like this color in the inner corner or this color as a as like a pop on the lower lash line or something. So there's something, this is like, it's like pulling on my heartstrings and my soul strings and my memory strings and my brain strings. I'm not gonna 
buy this because it's just, I do have blue already. So if I want to do what is being done here, like this stunning, shimmery, creamy, iridescent overlay on like a really brilliant blue purple on the eyes, I can do that with what I have. And that's a really big sticking point for me. Like that's a principle of mine. I'm really trying to use what I have to create the effect that I'm I'm being caused to want to create by advertising. And in this case, it's just a no brainer. Like there's no part of me that that's like, wait, but do I really have what I need to do this? I definitely do. And then also these little single floating things don't tend to find their way to my hand as much in my makeup collection. Some of my favorite eyeshadows that I have are singles or little just like single units that have screw tops and stuff. And yet I don't end up using them as much as I use shadows that are in my palettes or singles that are magnetic that can be stuck into palettes. I definitely don't end up using them enough commensurate with how much I tend to like love them or favor them even over some of my other eyeshadows. So that's another thing about myself as a consumer a user of makeup that makes me know that this wouldn't be a good purchase for me, but it is very beautiful. This Jouer thing, I was almost not gonna talk about it because I was look, looking for beautiful things and I saw it and I was like, whatever, another Jouer double stick or whatever they're being called, multi-duo, what? They call it the blush and bloom. Another Jouer blush and bloom. And I don't, I've never even bought anything from Jouer. Like I'm not really, I don't really have my finger on Jouer's pulse. The thing that I think is, that I thought was really beautiful right off the bat was the the photography. And I don't know, I assume this is Jouer's photography and not trend moods, but this incredibly beautiful tulip, you know how I feel about flowers. This tulip with like the shredded edges, or if there are any botanists out there, what is this called? Like, what is it called when a petal has this, like, it looks like torn paper or something along the edge. I'm like, what? How can I get this tulip in the flesh in my, in my life, like into my body? <laughs> because I'm, it's so pretty. So I saw this and I was like, mm, that's really pretty, but I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna really care about the makeup. But then I scrolled through and I looked at the picture and there is something to me very compelling about what they are calling bright rose. This is a color that I have been kind of thinking about lately. I, I actually think that a lipstick that's really growing on me, which is the, the most, the softest red of the three dragon packaging lipsticks from ZC, the one that I decided to keep. I really love it. I've been wearing it lately and it's it's pretty much this color, maybe a little bit more red. It's not quite a red, but it's not a coral. And I've sort of been struggling. It's not a, it doesn't lean orange. It doesn't like lean blue or anything. And I've kind of been struggling with how to describe it. I, I think of it as like a soft red or really wearable red. Bright rose makes a lot of sense to me. So I really like this color. Again, I don't need this. I don't need a highlighting stick a balm stick, definitely not. And I obviously don't need a lipstick or a cheek stick in this color because I have a lipstick in this color. The reason I know that I like it is because it reminds me of something that I have that is for the lips that I could also use for the cheeks. So it's definitely not on my wish list or anything. It just is on my list of the things that have been released lately that I think are beautiful. I think this shredded tulip in the advertising is beautiful. And I actually think that the color that they went with for this is very beautiful. Mmm, Skin Hero from Herborian. This actually is not, it, it's a little bit of a departure because the other things are like luscious and beautiful in a really artistic way. And this is just a clear thing. This is just like a clear thing with slight shimmer that's supposed to help prime and perfect your skin. It's like enhances your bare skin upon application. And it does look really pretty. Like when you look at the cream blended out, it looks kind of like, at least the way they've done it in the photograph, I don't know if it's photoshopped or what, but it looks kind of like it's it's spangling in the sun, kind of like the sun on the ocean water, you know? And when you see that, I think that human beings love nature so much, like the way that I reacted to that shredded tulip, the way that we all react when we see light spangling on water, I think that there is something like fundamental and evolutionary. Like when you look at this and you see this cream and it looks kind of like light spangling on the ocean water, that makes us want it. But it's what it is, is that we really like looking at the ocean. It, it compels me, it compels me. I saw it and I was like, I'm compelled. It has been compelled. This Orborean, the power of enhances your bare skin upon application compels me, you know, skin hero. But I just, I just have things, you know, I have primers, I have skin heroes, and I lately have actually been using like 
full-on illuminators instead of primers. I've basically just been like painting my face with iridescent champagne paste and letting it dry and then <laughs> spot concealing. Like that. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. So this is actually probably not shiny enough for me. In any case, there's really no, there's really nothing that would make me want to actually buy this, but I just, it's just pretty okay. It, like it, it, it it got me. It got me to put it on this list and mention it in this video. This I think is going, this is, okay, I, okay, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I have a couple of things to say about this. It's the Limoncello connection, connection. I wanna talk about the Limoncello collection from ColourPop and I also wanna talk about the fact that I feel like ColourPop has never really, I don't know if this is true. In my heart, ColourPop has never really recovered from the long break that they took. I, I feel like we the train was just going and going and going and nobody was questioning it and we were all just like color pop every week forever and ever and we were all just inevitably drawn back to see what the new release was and every Thursday and whatever. And then they took a break because of COVID, like many businesses had to. And then the fact that there was a break kind of made us all sort of wake up from the color pop trance. And now they're back and they're releasing new things and some of it's very beautiful and some of it's very compelling, sure. But I feel like ColourPop doesn't have that same hold, that same just total spell casting hold over the entire industry and everybody who follows it. Is that true or is it just that it doesn't have that hold over me? Like, is this, hap is this something that's happening specific to me or is it happening to all of you and all of us together? In any case, that was my thought when I saw this. I was like, wow, in the before times, this Limoncello connection collection from ColourPop would have gotten a lot of hype and airtime. And I feel like it's beautiful, but it's just one more thing that kind of like went in one of our collective ears and out the other one of our collective ears. But, you know, here I am talking about it. I think that the packaging's pretty. I, I like the sort of tile inspiration. I think that the most radical thing that I have to say about this is that it's the, it's the first time in a long time, or if ever, that I've seen a pop of blue that makes logical sense. Like this is clearly a warm, goldy, yellow, yellow leaning with that one greeny leaning yellow palette with a pop of blue. But given the inspiration and the packaging, it all really hangs together. And I do not have a single quarrel with the fact that this is kind of a warm palette with a pop of blue. Although the yellows aren't really warm. Two of these yellows are kind of green leaning and that's not a warm, a green yellow isn't a warm color. So it's not like that, 100% cliche warm neutrals with the pop of blue. But if I've ever seen, you know, if you've ever seen a pop of blue, like this is one. This is a pop of blue if I've ever seen one is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and I just, I think it works and that's pretty interesting. But that's the only thing that's interesting to me about this. And it's totally an academic thing. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, ColourPop made a pop of blue make sense. And it all looks perfectly fine. But I just, I haven't been to ColourPop's website in months and I don't know when I don't know when I'll go there again. Oh, this is so pretty. Who has tried e Unique Beauty? Because every time, I don't know if it's the photography, because when I look at the packaging itself, I mean, it's adorable. It's like a self-care pampering themed thing. And I the illustrations are stunning, but I'm not usually drawn to illustrations on cardboard packaging like this. Like it's not my favorite type of makeup packaging is usually like matte, sleek, gilded, modern looking. And yet whenever I see anything by E Unique on trend mood, my eye is immediately drawn to it and I'm like, what is that? And I think it's because of the texture of the pans. And again, I don't know if it's the way they photograph them or if it's something about the quality of the shadows. I also think to me, there's something about the way that this brand puts colors together. They will have these little palettes and they won't be entirely monochromatic. Like the one on the bottom, has a peach in it and it also has a purpley blue and it also has a deeper blue and it also has a greeny yellow and it has a, a sandy color. You know, it's like there are two or three different color ideas all being handled together in this tiny six pan palette and yet it works. It really works. I actually feel like it reminds me of the kind of logic, the kind of color logic that I myself pursue when I'm building my own palette. I feel like whoever is putting the colors together, whoever is making the palettes at e Unique, that person and I have similar ways of seeing color more than any other brand actually. They're pretty expensive. It says 55 pounds, which I think is like $65. 
I believe that this is an independent brand and it looks like there, it looks like great pains have been taken over the formulas and the pressing. And it looks like it would be a really luscious, gooey little palette, the likes of which we, we know can come from independent brands and more often do come from independent brands than come from mainstream brands. I'm sure that the price is accounted for. I'm sure that there's a reason for it, but it is kind of a lot. So that would be one reason, even if I were buying eyeshadow palettes, that would be one reason that I might not, you know, be jumping to buy one of these, but I'm really not buying eyeshadows right now. Eyeshadows and eyeshadow palettes. Uh, it's been gosh, over a year at this point that I feel like I've just been really okay with what I have and sticking with what I have. And that would be even if I weren't sometimes receiving eyeshadow palettes to try out in PR, but I am. So I'm already like dealing with extra on top of what I already have and what's already good enough for me. And that makes me really not want to spend any of my own money on any more eyeshadows. Let's talk about this Natasha Denona palette. I put this in the video because it's like, I haven't filmed one of these since it came out. It's a new Tasha Denona palette, so it was sort of a no-brainer to put it in here to talk about. It is pretty, but I don't feel like it has something about it that truly distinguishes it as like the prettiest or something that makes me want to be like, here's the thing that's super pretty about this, the way that the Unique palettes do, for example. This is more just like, yeah, it's like we're gonna talk about it, of course we are, because it's a new Tasha Denona palette. I know this isn't for me, like the, this kind of colorful palette definitely isn't for me. I have the Club Nebula palette, Angie's collab with Kaleidos, and so many of the shades that would ever compel me in this palette are in that palette, and I do really like the formula of that. And this doesn't seem to have anything multidimensional, like shifting. It seems like straight up metallics and straight up mattes in these different colors. And in that way, I guess it's very cohesive. Like I appreciate that they only tried to do the one thing, which is like this this straight up clear cut concept of what you're getting. It's, it's very like artist's palette, you know? I like that. As always with Natasha Denona, I feel like it's so well conceived of. I really appreciate that. But for my use, it's like those straight, just like a straight, plain grape purple metallic shadow. I don't know when I would ever use that because if I'm ever using a metallic in a strong color or like a statement metallic, I'm reaching for a multi-chrome or a duochrome or something, you know, something kind of extraordinary and different and shade shifting. I'm not building looks out of these just like straight, clean, metallic, bold colors or like jewel toned colors. So it's just 100% not for me, but you know, it's beautiful. I'm sure people are absolutely loving it. I'm sure they are, because I can really see how someone with different requirements from mine with different desires has been like waiting their whole life for this palette, you know? Let's talk about some dewy blush is. Is. Let's talk about some dewy blush is. Let's talk about some dewy blushes. Everyone I feel is, re and when I say everyone, I mean Makeup Revolution and ColourPop. Everyone is releasing their version of the M Cosmetics Color Drop Serum Blushes, which I love, and I've done like a full review, review on those, and I've kind of re-fallen in love with them recently. Like I've been wearing Venetian Rose more and actually pink nectar as well. Those are the two that I kept from the range. Those are my two faves. I just appreciate that formula so much. So not only does that intrigue me about these two releases, but they're also very pretty. The pretty thing I think about the Makeup Revolution one, uh, there are a couple pretty things. One, the packaging. It's just very pretty, you know, they did a good job. I really like the tube. I like the idea of putting this kind of thing in a tube. And I wish that M Cosmetics had done that because that's the one big issue with their product is just that faulty dropper. It's so annoying. This tube looks very elegant. The colors are pretty pretty. I mean, the one, the the pink, the lightest one, the one that would be kind of the, that would be the least contrasty on my skin, the easiest to wear. I wish it were a little less peachy and less pink. I wish it were a little bit more neutral, more beige. So I wish the shade range of this were broader, but all of the colors in their own way look really beautiful. Even that fuchsia, which isn't a color I would wear, it's cool to see that. So this is compelling. I'm definitely not gonna like go out of my way. I don't really buy from Makeup Revolution. I don't even know where I would get this. I'm not gonna go out of my way to try to figure out where I would get it because again, I have two of the M Cosmetics ones. They work beautifully. I think probably the two colors I have are better for me than any of these colors would be. So, or as good at least. And so there, you know, there's no reason, but very, very pretty and very interesting tea. 
And then ColourPop has gone and done the same thing. And the ColourPop ones, these are pretty. The colors are very, very beautiful. I wish that they had a pointy thing though. I really like that pointy dispenser for a, a liquid cheek product like this because with something like this, a little tends to go a really long way and it can get messy quickly. On the flat screw top, like Glossier, uh, what is it? Cheek, I'm like future cloud. <laughs> the Glossier cloud paint, it doesn't have a, a flat lid that's the same size as the container, but it has the little screw top. But I think what's underneath the lid is the same as what's underneath the lid in the ColourPop ones. It's just harder to control the amount that you're dispensing when you have something flat like that and it's harder to keep it from being messy. The super pointy squeeze tubes like the Flower Beauty Blush Bomb, that is the ideal, in my opinion, mechanism to dispense this product. So too bad that ColourPop didn't do that with a little pointy one. But the colors, y'all, the colors, the colors. These colors on the bottom, I'm gonna show you the, um, the swatches, the Trend Mood swatches. Instant Crush, the one on the bottom, I live. That's so beautiful. Kiss Kiss, the, it's like, it's also rich, but it's very neutral. Again, all the same reasons. I'm not buying this, I'm not gonna buy these for all the same reasons that I'm not gonna buy the ones from Makeup Revolution, um, but I, I do like seeing them. Urban Decay's repackaged Moon Dust Shadows. So they came out with the Moon Dust Shadows in these beautiful, clear, individual containers. And you know, we did kind of cover this already in the video. I talked about the fact that I tend not to reach for single packaged shadows like this when we were talking about the Pat McGrath. So that would deter me. There is an Urban Decay single shadow that I've always wanted. I think it's the one called Space Cowboy. Yeah, it's the one called Space Cow Cowboy. I've seen Amanda Z get a really, really wet look, natural, very wet looking lid, eyelid, just by putting this shade all over the lid. So I've always kind of had an eye out for it and I've always hoped that I could someday acquire it. So actually maybe I maybe I would one day, like maybe if I see these ever in person, I'm definitely not gonna order one of these online, but maybe if I'm like in a Sephora next, next year and I see this and I see a Space Cowboy and I see it in that beautiful little package, maybe I'll get it and just have it as a single. I really like the design of, of this packaging and I think that they did, a really good thing in redesigning it because the old ones used to be so chunky and very dated looking and like really awkward and take up a lot of space. And these are just so modern looking and feeling and so covetable. So incredibly beautiful. Um, I don't have a reason to want to buy a bunch of singles like this. I also tend to prefer singles to be magnetic and I'm actually not sure if this, if these are removable pans. The old ones weren't, so I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't something that's a removable pan. Let me see if it says it anywhere. Y'all, whenever I, I just went, I just look, went to look in the comments on Trend Mood just to see if anyone had said anything about whether these are removable. I'm going through one of those, um, I wanted to say one of those like weeks, but it's really just like, it's been the past couple of weeks where I just, I, I can't believe how mean people are in comments. And I'm not even talking about my own videos. Like for the most part, people are great. Like I love you guys. And the comments are usually amazing, wonderful. I'm not talking about taking things personally myself. It's just like whenever I look at anything on the internet, a, an Instagram post or other people's YouTube videos or anything, and I scroll down, look at the comments for any reason, I just feel like we can do better as people. And I did not get an answer to my question about whether these are removable pans. I couldn't hang out down there in those comments for long enough to find out. But my guess is that they aren't because they're, again, their other, um, other singles weren't. They're just designed to be used as like one little thing. And I would only get one of these if it was like one that I felt like I was gonna use as a single all over the lid shade over and over and over again until I used it up. I do actually feel that way about Space Cowboy, but um, I'm not rushing to buy it right now. It's just something that I might do in the future. Oh yeah, let's talk about Samantha's collab with Ofra, especially because we're talking about things that are really pretty. I think that this is supposed to be coming, coming in PR, but it's not here. Either, either it's not actually coming or it's taking a long time to get here because I've seen other people do videos on this. If it does come in PR, I would love to do like a get ready with me or a demo. I would love to dig into this like rich red. I, I like doing these like red mauve looks that are really red leaning because it makes my eyes look really green. It's interesting, my eyes do have quite a lot of green in them, but when I put on, you know, green looks like this, or even just most brownie looks, they tend to just look more hazel or more brown. And then when I put on a color like 
this or a look like this. It has like these reddish purples or like mauve -y, red, re reddy mauves and then featuring like a red like that. Suddenly I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like, I'm a green eyed bee over here. You know what I mean? So I, I would love to do that. The glosses also look really beautiful. Ofra makes a, a deeper gloss. It's one of my favorite glosses that I have. It's called Truffle. And I think that the one that Samantha released with this collection called Queen has potential to be kind of like that, but just a, a little bit different, like a little bit more honey colored. So I'm intrigued by this. But most of all, I'm just incredibly proud of Sam for everything. She has overcome so much and yet is still so loving. And I, I admire that a lot. So congrats, Sam. And uh, yeah, this is definitely something very, very beautiful that has uh, recently been released. Mm, okay, the Fenty, Fenty's new um, blurring face thing, tint, blurring skin tint. So I said in a video recently, and I think this video will have gone up on Friday, on, um, no, Wednesday, and this is going up on, I think, Friday. I said in a video recently that I've been thinking about making it my business to review complexion products that are supposed to be like kind of mid coverage, mid to light weight, things like skin tints and BB creams and CC creams that actually look like they might have a wide enough shade range to include me because a lot of BB creams and CC creams don't, but more brands are starting to come out with that kind of thing. And this is definitely in that group. So when I said in that video, like, oh, you know, I'm thinking about kind of making that a feature, like one of the things that I do on my channel. And then I saw this, I was like, oh, that's like one of those things that I was talking about. I went and watched some videos. I like poked around because by the time this was on my radar, already it had been released and people had been reviewing it. So I went and poked around to see if it to see if it really seemed like something that I could add to the conversation about. I don't think that my thoughts on it are fully formed. I love Fenty. I'm always down to kind of be into something from Fenty. I have really warm feelings about Fenty and I, I know that that's part of why I'm kind of like, mm, maybe I should review this. But I think it does kind of depend on whether there are still kind of like mysteries afoot about how it performs or has it already been kind of like rev reviewed up down and all around town and everyone already has a pl pretty clear idea of whether this is going to work or not for you. Like, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have an idea. I'll just say this intrigues me. I think it's very beautiful. I think the bottle is very beautiful. The lightest shade definitely looks like it could be light enough for me, although it's a little bit hard to tell until I get something in my hands, but it, the swatch looks promising and I would love to find out. I have it on the list of things. It's sort of a maybe for a self-sponsored review, but uh, I'm, I'm not totally sure. So let me know what you think. I think that that's gonna do it. Let's end it there. This was, I feel like this was fun because I, I like celebrating what is beautiful. This is like sort of similar to the last time I did this, although there was a little more angst there because the last time I did it, I was like, everything's tempting me. Everything makes me want to buy it. And that's not how I feel right now. I feel like I'm able to say like, yeah, this is beautiful. I really appreciate this about it, but it's not tearing me up inside. You know, it's like, let's just go through and be like, this is really beautiful. This is really beautiful. This is what I like about X. This is what I like about Y. This is what I appreciate about what this artist is doing or what this designer is doing, but without that necessarily having to be connected to making purchases, and even without there having to be any angst over the fact that we are going to appreciate beauty without it being connected to making purchases. Because I didn't feel very torn up about any of these things. I just felt like it was fun to look through them as one might look through paintings at an art gallery or an art museum, you know, where they're not even for sale or where they're way more expensive than any art that I would be able to afford you can still just bask in the glow. So I appreciate you being here and basking in the glow with me. And I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself right now so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 